at Belmont Park, where for 134 years, the world's greatest thoroughbreds have gathered just prior to entering America's biggest racetrack. Here in the shade of Belmont's enduring natural symbol, a 176-year-old white pine tree, Secretariat still wears the garland of carnations, the symbol of the winner of the Belmont Stakes. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. Welcome to Belmont Park on New York's Long Island, where today War Emblem will attempt to become horse racing's 12th Triple Crown winner. Well, it was back in 1973 that the legendary Secretariat galloped into America's imagination, winning the Triple Crown and sealing that achievement with an astonishing 31-length victory here at the Belmont. In doing so, Secretariat also ended a quarter-century Triple Crown drought. No horse since Citation in 1948 had won the Derby, the Preakness, and the Belmont. As it turned out, the 70s represented something of a resurgence for the sport of kings because Seattle slew and Affirmed followed in that decade with Triple Crown victories. But since Affirmed in 1978, it's been 24 years and no horse has turned the trick. Is War Emblem on the verge of doing it? We'll find out in about an hour whether he can make a run into immortality. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. New York, a place where many memorable sporting moments have been made.
see if this horse, War Emblem, can accomplish one of the most difficult feats in sports, to win the Triple Crown. There's the Belmont Stakes Trophy that awaits the winner today. And the Belmont Stakes will be run in beautiful weather, a magnificent day in New York, blue skies as you can see, and the temperature in the upper 60s, 68 degrees, and despite some heavy rain Thursday night, the track is fast today. The Belmont Stakes, the test of a champion over a mile and a half. The purse will be a million dollars plus for War Emblem, that $5 million bonus from Visa at stake for winning the Visa Triple Crown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Belmont Park. I'm Tom Hammond. Today for War Emblem, the proposition is a simple one. Win the Belmont Stakes and join the greatest of the sport or become the 16th horse to lose the Triple Crown in the Belmont. Simple proposition, but difficult to achieve. Bob Baffert knows that. He's been in this position before, narrowly losing the Triple Crown with Silver Charm in 1997 and Real Quiet a year later. But he's on a serious roll right now, having won the last four Triple Crown races with Point Given last year and, of course, now with War Emblem. Still, there are plenty of doubters that War Emblem can carry his speed over the demanding mile-and-a-half test of a champion that is the Belmont Stakes. With one scratch, Puzzlement 10 will challenge the Derby and Preakness winner today. Of course, betting is already underway, and let's check the current odds now in the Belmont Stakes. Our tax two, a long shot 65 to one, like a hero at 24. Wiseman's Ferry expected to show early speed 17. Essence of Dubai at 21. Sunday break getting some play at 7 to 1. Perfect drift 5 to 1 at the moment. Puzzlement with scratch. Medallia Doro, his third Triple Crown event, now 16 to 1. Proud Citizen is 7. War Emblem opened at even money, but now up to 7 to 5. Magic Wisner, second in the Preakness, getting some play at 6 to 1. And Sarava, a long shot, the longest on the board, at 75 to 1. Now we're joined now by Charlesy Candy. And Charlesy, uh, just like three weeks ago at Pimlico, the proposition for the Belmont, uh, like the Preakness, is uh, relax. Well, he took a step in the right direction in the Preakness, kind of grudgingly listening to Victor <laughs> Espinosa's pleas to slow down. But he was still straining at the leash pretty hard, and he cannot get away with that at a mile and a half. Plus, he's got a new configuration of racetrack to deal with. Belmont has these wide, sweeping turns, and they don't slow a horse down very much. Then when he gets around to the backstretch, he's looking at a half mile of wide open spaces, and that tends to make a horse want to ramble along a little bit. So, Tom, today, more than ever, it's really important for him to relax. Well, as you might imagine, security around War Emblem's stall has been very tight. Bob Newmar, what's it like over there now? Well, as you can see, Tom Hammond, it is tight as a button around a horse who, as we all know, just loves the lead. That's why he won the Kentucky Derby on the lead. He showed versatility in the Preakness by sitting in the second spot behind a very, very fast sprinter, and he won that one anyway. So how does this shape up today? Well, War Emblem could go to the lead, or a new shooter, Wiseman's Ferry, has the early speed. He could go for it. Or there might even be a sneak attack from the likes of Medallia Doro or Proud Citizen. Whatever, the pressure is squarely on jockey Victor Espinoza. He must ration this horse's speed in a sensible and intelligent way. If he gets caught up in any early speed whoop de doo at a mile and a half, you can kiss this triple crown goodbye. Now, who could beat him? Well, perfect drift for one. Mike Battaglia has watched him throughout the winter. Mike, how much improvement have you seen in this contender? Well, believe it or not, Bob, three months ago, perfect drift wasn't even considered the best three-year-old at Turfway Park, but every time they've stretched this out, horse out to a longer distance, he has shown marked improvement. His jockey, Eddie Delahousie, is known for his patience, and Murray Johnson thinks the mile and a half is just going to suit him perfectly. Uh, while um, Espinoza is relatively young and inexperienced, Eddie D has already won this race twice. And Perfect Drift has been, uh, he's been pretty calm today, but sometimes he has a habit of bobbing and weaving and biting at things in his stall. So just to keep him occupied, Murray hung a rubber ball outside his stall. And so Perfect Drift knows who he has to beat today. Murray drew a picture, although not a very good one, of War Emblem on that ball. Kenny Rice, I'm sure Proud Citizen knows who he has to beat. He's chased War Emblem in both the uh, uh, Kentucky Derby and in the Freakness. Well, Mike, here in the Proud Citizen camp, they say they know how to beat War Emblem. The key is, will this time they be able to be close enough to make a strong run when they come to the stretch? 
certainly there's a lot of confidence here because Wayne Lucas has won the Belmont Stakes four times, three of those with runners who like to sit close to the pace. That is the style of proud citizen. And there is no one here who understands the pressure that Bob Baffert is under today better than Wayne Lucas. It was just three years ago that Lucas came here with a chance for a triple crown, charismatic finishing third in the Belmont Stakes. And jockey Mike Smith, well, he told me earlier that he's been waiting for another chance. He was not pleased with his ride in the Preakness. He got fanned wide in the first turn and stayed wide throughout the race, even getting passed by Magic Wisner in the final strides to have to settle for third. There certainly is no jockey in this race today that understands the race course here at Belmont Park better than Mike Smith. This used to be his home base. This will be his ninth try at a Belmont Stakes. He has yet to win one of those, but he has won seven riding titles here at the Belmont track. And one other plus for Proud Citizen, he does have a win over the Belmont Strip. Now, Donna Brothers, I know you've been following a horse that also knows his way to the winner's circle already here at Belmont. I have, Kenny Rice. Not only has Sunday Break won over this racetrack, he won impressively. Unable to make it into the Derby because of insufficient earnings, Neil Drysdale, the trainer, pointed Sunday Break for the Peter Pan as a prep to the Belmont. In 1992, he followed the same path with a horse called AP Indy, who went on to win the Belmont. Now, Sunday Break is a horse who has a win over the racetrack. Neil Drysdale, the trainer, has a win in the Belmont, and his jockey, Gary Stevens, has three wins in the Belmont Stakes already. However, Sunday Break has never beaten the competition that he's going to face today, and the only time that he faced a, comp or a, a field of this quality, he was third in the Wood Memorial behind Medaglia de Oro and Buddha that day. But I did talk to his groom. He said he had a nice gallop over the racetrack this morning, and Tom... He said he's ready to face this competition. Well, an affinity for the racetrack here at Belmont is important, but as you said, Donna, can he do it against this quality of competition? Well, if you'd like to log on and join us at NBCSports.com, you can make your pick. Do you think War Emblem can win the Triple Crown? 41% of the voters so far think so. They also like Perfect Drift and Proud Citizen. It's all at NBCSports.com. We're underway at the Belmont Stakes. The 134th running of the Belmont Stakes is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the Visa Triple Crown, by Chrysler, drive equals love, and by Franklin Templeton, gain from our perspective. This year, the world's top horses will buy for victory at the Belmont Stakes, but only one horse will be vying for a place in history. Only one horse will be attempting a feat unrealized in 24 years. Wins the Only one horse will be racing for the Visa Triple Crown. Here comes and only one card can get you in to see it. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Hey, when was your last family weekend? Go sightseeing, attend a ball game, visit a theme park, and you know, quality family time. You don't want your kids to grow up to be weirdos, do you? No. I mean... You have a great day. Need a family weekend? Book by June 28th for residents in Come Out and Play Rates. My name is Alice. I live in a palace. I live... You must book your weekend rate by June 28th. Call 1-800-MARRIED. What happens in Washington has a major impact on the stocks that I follow. Deficits are back. We have a wartime economy on our hands. It's very important to have some sense about how Washington will ultimately act on these issues. That's why you want to tap into Washington sources. Not a day goes by when I'm not on the phone with one of the Prudential analysts That's up in New York. I'm able to make better investment research calls because of Prudential's team of experts in Washington. When you marry Washington with Wall Street, it really adds value for investors. I didn't know about today's purple pill called Nexium. But I spoke to my doctor. And now I do. Call this number for more information and a Nexium free trial offer. Nexium, today's purple pill. Do you know about it? So, Dan, do we have everything we need for this meeting? It's all right here, sir. Is your data backup as reliable as it should be? Don't worry, sir. He told me everything. Ours is Brightstore Storage Software from Computer Associates. NBC, the network of America's most honored dramas, this fall presents two.
two exceptional new dramas, American Dreams, One Family's Journey Through the Decade That Changed Us All, and Boomtown, and the writer of Band of Brothers and Speed. American Dreams and Boomtown, this fall on NBC. Seattle Slew completed his Triple Crown while still undefeated, the only horse to achieve that feat. He won the Belmont by four on a muddy track. The last living Triple Crown winner died May 7th this year, 25 years to the day after winning the Kentucky Derby. And the owners of Seattle Slew are on hand to see if War Emblem can join that elite group, Mickey and Karen Taylor, and the co-owners, Dr. Jim and Sally Hill. And some other Triple Crown owners are on hand as well. Who could forget Penny Chenery? We saw the shot of her earlier celebrating the owner of the Great One Secretariat. And of course, Patrice Wolfson, along with her husband, the late Louis Wolfson, the owners of the last Triple Crown winner, affirmed. Today's aerial coverage of the Belmont Stakes being provided by MetLife. Look to the skies for the MetLife blimps, Snoopy 1 and Snoopy 2, as they team up with NBC Sports throughout the year. Let's update you on the odds here at Belmont Park as Artax 2 continues to be a real long shot. Like a hero, 24. Wiseman's Ferry, 17 to 1. Essence of Dubai, 21 to 1. Sunday break at 8 to 1. Perfect Drift, second choice at 5 to 1. Medallia Doro, 16. Proud Citizen, 6 to 1. War Emblem, 7 to 5. The favorite still at 7 to 5. Magic Wisner, 6 to 1. And Sarava, 75 to 1. Well, in a relatively short time, Bob Baffert has established himself as one of the best trainers of Triple Crown horses in history. But with his manner and sometimes unconventional approach to the job of thoroughbred trainer, he's become a controversial character. There's seldom neutral ground. You either love him or hate him. So at least I don't have that monkey on my back. 
This is the only race, the Belmont, the only race in which you have a horse entered today. Is that uh, conscious, wanting to focus, not wanting to be distracted in any way? Well, I really didn't have any fast enough for the other undercard races, but uh, I wanted to bring a horse here. We're, we're totally focused on this horse today, and so, uh, you know, we've come so close. I want to get it done, and hopefully today's the day. Is War Emblem a super horse or a good horse that's the best of a so-so lot? I think we're going to find out today. Uh, the track is playing a little bit that's slower than it was yesterday. Yesterday would have been ideal with a heavy range to try to get fast with the water. So the pace is going to tell you if he's a super horse, how fast he goes early. Uh, Firm went in 25 and a half and 50. And, you know, I, I would love to get those. If we could get those fractions, that's a whole, that first half a mile is a whole key to this race. And uh, with the speed in there, I don't know what's going to happen. Reasonable people understand that with success and with glamour comes some resentment. Nothing you can do about it. But is any part of your image something you've provoked and you wish you could change? No, I think the only thing I could probably change is um, probably not win as much, I guess. And uh, But, you know, I work hard at it and I, I have fun and I think my laid-back attitude, I make it maybe look easy to some, but we do work really hard at it and I like to have fun because it's seven days a week and we lose more than we win and um, I'm just like a fun guy. I have not changed at all since I've trained quarter horses. Prince Ahmed bin Salman is not here. He's back in Riyadh. Have you spoken with him and are you surprised that he's not here? Well, I mean, this I, I'm just sort of left out of the loop, but he, he does have a job and uh, Last year he, w he was going to come to the Preakness and he couldn't make it because something happened with his with his uh, with his business. So um, maybe something happened there, but uh, I, I, they keep me out of the loop there. Boys, is today the day for a triple crown? Yeah, he's going to win easy. E easy. What do you say, Forrest? Same easy. Same. If they were allowed to bet, they'd put their money on War Emblem. We're coming back to the Belmont after this.
Channel 2, Buffalo, NBC in Western New York. The fourth Triple Crown winner in the 40s was Calumet Citation, one of racing's all-time greats. At one time, he won 16 straight and was racing's first millionaire. Despite stumbling at the break, Citation led wire to wire in the Belmont, winning by six, making Eddie Arcaro the only jockey to win a pair of Triple Crowns. And welcome back to Belmont Park. As Bob Costas was talking uh, with Bob Baffert, he mentioned that Prince Ahmed Salman, the owner of the Thoroughbred Corporation, the owner of War Emblem, did not make the trip today. He remained in Riyadh officially. The word was he was tending to business and family concerns. There had been a lot of speculation in the media and otherwise here about how he would be received in New York in the wake of 9-11. He is uh, a member of the Saudi royal family. And even though he was educated in the United States, owns a home here and had no adverse reaction uh, after the Preakness or the Derby, there was some concern about how he would be received and even for his safety. He chose to remain in Riyadh today. He sent uh, Prince Faisal, his younger brother, here to represent him. And he will be the man that receives the trophy if War Emblem is able to win the Triple Crown. Well, Gary Stevens knows what it's like to be on both sides of this Triple Crown thing. He rode for Bob Baffert on Silver Charm and narrowly lost the Triple Crown in 97. Uh, actually, uh, then he beat Baffert in real quiet with Victory Gallop the next year on point given last year to win and now trying to beat Baffert with Sunday break in the race today. Let's go to Mike and Bob. Well, the question to ponder here is that why is it so darn tough to win this Triple Crown? And I think the simplest things, Mike, can be the most important. I'm thinking about two words, maintaining form. You know, if you count the Illinois Derby, War Emblem has won three races in a row. Cracker Jack runs all three. Can he sustain it a fourth time? They're not machines. If they were, boy, there'd be 50 Triple Crown winners. Yeah, you're right. There's a reason we've only had 11 Triple Crown winners. To get a horse ready for the battle of the Kentucky Derby, to shorten up two weeks later and win the Preakness, and then to come back three weeks later and have the stamina to win the Belmont Stakes, it just takes a special kind of horse, and I think it's one of the toughest things to do in all of sports, Bob. I offer as evidence a list of magnificent horses who won the Derby, who won the Preakness, post-affirmed, who could not get the job done in the Belmont. Glory names, Ali Sheba, Sunday Silence, Spectacular Bid, that's just to name a few. You know what, if, if War Emblem does win today, he deserves his place in history, and he deserves to be mentioned with the great three-year-olds of all time, Tom. Well, I agree with you guys, and here's another reason why uh, he should join the all-time racing greats. He hasn't... Uh, had any walkovers at all, War Emblem will have faced, if he wins today, a total of 39 in his three Triple Crown races. That would be by seven the all-time record. War Admiral 32 is the record at the moment. And the fans continue to think that War Emblem will do it. He is the favorite, but not an overwhelming favorite. And he opened it even money. He's gone up as we check the latest odds. Essence of Dubai at 21. Sunday break at seven and perfect drift. 5-1, to one, been in the money in both the Derby and Preakness. Medallia Doro, 16 for Bobby Frankel, proud citizen. 6-1. to one. War Emblem, 7-5. to five. Magic Wisner at 6-1 to one and 75-1. to one. Proud citizen in the money in both the Derby and Preakness. Well, as we said, the record for horses face now belongs to War Admiral. Following Gallant Fox and his son Omaha, War Admiral, the third Triple Crown winner of the 30s. The son of Man of War left a bloody trail on the way to the winner's circle after injuring his foot, leaving the gate in the Belmont Stakes. Nevertheless, he won by three lengths in track record time. You see a grueling commute. At Franklin Templeton, we saw a reason to invest in tax-free bonds for mass transit. Investing in our communities while helping shareholders keep more of what they earn requires a unique perspective, the kind that comes from having one of the largest research teams in the industry and has made Franklin the nation's leading tax-free mutual fund manager. Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. I didn't know about today's purple pill called Nexium. But I spoke to my doctor. And now I do. Call this number for more information and a Nexium free trial offer. Nexium, today's purple pill. Do you know about it? Imagine what you would do with an extra hundred dollars a day. Well, if you sign 
for your purchases whenever you use your Visa check card, you could turn fantasy into reality. Because each time you sign, you'll be entered to win $100 a day for a whole year. Imagine that. The Visa check card. It's everywhere you want to be. In today's real estate market, the Prudential Real Estate Network can get you moving. With over 42,000 sales professionals you can rely on, backed by a name trusted for more than a century. Find out why millions of people are sold on Prudential Real Estate. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. B is very, very extraordinary. E is even more than anyone that you adore and love. Exclusively from Chrysler, our seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge, because love is a commitment. This summer, Dateline Sunday is all new. Men of Jewish descent in the German army who live to tell the story. Dateline Sunday on NBC. He beat Andre Agassi. He beat 2000 US Open champ Marat Safin. Now Juan Carlos Ferrero goes for his first Grand Slam title. The French Open, tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific. The Belmont would be Count Fleet's final race. He bowled a tendon while winning by 25 links. He was such a heavy favorite, the track had to come up with extra money just to pay the minimum five cents on the dollar. Ridden by Johnny Longdon, he raced in the colors of John D. Hertz, who made his fortune with the Yellow Cab Company. The rental car company came later. The Belmont Paddock, where soon the horses for the Belmont Stakes, the 134th edition, will be gathering. And meanwhile, back in the jockey's room, Young Victor Espinoza trying to gather his thoughts. There he is. If Bob Baffert is feeling butterflies, what can Victor be feeling at the moment, trying to stay loose as he awaits the call to the paddock? Well, the story of War Emblem in many ways is the story of the horse nobody wanted. No one wanted him for the reserve price of $20,000 at the yearling sales, Charles e. And his previous owner, Russell Reinemann, his Chicago steel business struggling, tried to sell him earlier this year, but several prospective buyers turned him down because of bone chips in his ankles and a knee. Then, faced with having to skip the Triple Crown, Prince Ahmed and Bob Baffert went in search of a derby horse. And after War Emblem scored at impressive victory in the Illinois Derby, they paid Reinemann $900,000 for 90% of him. The sale came just 23 days before the Kentucky Derby, and they discovered they had a horse with a mind of his own. I think he's very intimidating. If he was out with a bunch of horses, he would be the master of the herd. I want him to be like that. I want him to think he's the toughest guy out there because when he steps on that racetrack, he owns it. First time I saw War Emblem was the morning after he was born. He was born February the 20th at 6:10 p.m. War Emblem's mother was a good-sized mare. The sweetest lady was her name. The next year after War Emblem was born, she was giving birth and had complications and, and didn't make it. I believe he's had a change of attitude after he left the farm. He has his own mind about everything, whether he's in a stall or whether he's on the racetrack. But he was very aggressive, and he just, uh, he tried hard. I mean, it was, uh, anything he did, he, he kind of puts his whole heart in. He came with a reputation of, beware, you know, he's bad. <laughs> he'll try to bite you, he'll try to strike you. And we worked with him to, to realize that, you know, he can be the boss, but he's going to have to do it our way. He loves women. And so what we did is Jill, my fiance, she worked with him. She got him to eat peppermints. He loves mints. Little by little, he's not afraid of people anymore. He's mean. He's a wild horse. That's what 
That's what I like him. I don't think any horse they have that kind of energy. I think that's why he the best. And back in the barn, War Emblem will soon be making his appearance for the walk over to the paddock. Right now, the groom would be getting him ready. The bridles put on and almost all in readiness. And to me, the charges from some quarters that Baffert and the Prince bought their way into a Derby and Preakness winner and that that somehow cheapens the accomplishment is just plain silly. They obviously saw something in the cold that others didn't see. And consider this, the previous owner and trainer had no intention of running him in the Derby, so War Emblem would not now be poised to perhaps make racing history. And one other uh, note about the Horse Nobody Wanted theme, War Emblem Sire, our emblem, was a Kentucky cast-off sold to Allen and Audrey Murray and standing for a fee of $4,000 in Maryland. Well, a couple of weeks ago, the Murrays sent him back to Kentucky to Windstar and TaylorMade Farm. The sale price, $10.1 million. The 134th running of the Belmont Stakes is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the Visa Triple Crown. Welcome to the 134th running of the Belmont Stakes, the final jewel in the Visa Triple Crown. War Emblem enters today's dramatic contest seeking to become the first Triple Crown winner in 24 years. With a victory today, War Emblem will earn the coveted Triple Crown Trophy, a special place in history, and Visa's $5 million bonus. We wish all of today's competitors the best of luck. Thank you, and enjoy the race. NBC is proud to be America's number one network. The number one show, the number one dramas, the number one new drama and new comedy. Number one in the morning, nightly news, primetime, and late night. No matter where you look, the quality shows on NBC. Prophecies were told at the right. It would come from the land of the troubling earth and smoking mountains. It would possess all the goodness of the earth and the spices of many lands, a taste like no other. It would be offered to the people, and the people would declare it great. Mighty Tassel, the spice of life. Because serious personal injury may result in major medical and financial worries, real experience can make a real difference. Brown Chiari only handles cases where serious injury is involved. Brown Chiari has the real experience to help maximize benefits for clients without delay. When you want real experience on your side, you want Brown Chiari. Experience where it counts, results when needed. Call 1-800-66-BROWN for a free consultation. Brown Chiari, a dignified approach to personal injury. One, two, three. The Buick Drive is alive. One, two, three. The Great American Car Company delivers rendezvous, offering the best of a luxury sedan, minivan, and SUV. Now choose financing as low as 1.9 APR. Or, after 2,000 cash back, Rendezvous CX starts at around 24,000. Rendezvous. Ride, comfort, innovation. See your Western New York Buick dealer. Channel 2 News, Kevin O'Connell on your side. Welcome back to Belmont Park as the jockeys weigh out Jerry Bailey on the scale. None of the jockeys weigh 126 pounds, so they put lead in a saddle pad to bring him up to that weight. Did you say it's a pound? That's Pat Day on the scale. He'll be riding like a hero. Mike Smith takes his turn. And let's go to Kenny Rice. Tom, back here at the barn area with Murray Johnson, who is the trainer of Perfect Drift, third place finisher in the Kentucky Derby. Murray, you opted to skip the Preakness. This will actually just be his third race since March 23rd. Uh, you brought him along slowly. I guess that was the plan? Yeah, we... Uh, Figured that was the best thing for the horse, and that's what we've stuck to, and uh, we feel we're in a good position. One of the first things you said the other day at the draw, I asked you how Perfect Drift was doing, and you said you pace makes the race. You're looking for more pace today because you ran third almost the entire trip behind War Emblem in the Derby. Yeah, it was an unusual pace scenario in the Derby. It wasn't what everybody expected, and uh, 
everyone's expecting more today, but uh, as we learnt in the Derby, anything can happen. And uh, the, with the mile and a half, I don't think we need as much pace, but there should be plenty of pace for us. On Derby Day, you mowed your grass to relax. What have you done today? Oh, I just walked around here and... Couldn't gone. find a weed eater or anything? No, no. Uh, Naira has the Belmont looking very good. All right, good luck today, Murray Thanks. Johnson. Tom? All right, Kenny. Now, you may have noticed, of course, the Aussie accent. Murray, a fifth-generation Australian horseman who has come to the United States and has uh, had much success based in Kentucky. Well, the horses are starting to arrive, sort of a chess game about who's going to go first being played out. That's Sarava, number 12, War Emblem, yet to make his appearance. And uh, there was a famous incidence of gamesmanship in this regard, right, Charlesy? Well, you want to minimize the time that your horse is in the paddock to sort of save their energy for the race. Billy Turner, who trained the rather tightly wound Seattle Slough, wanted to have him in the paddock as little as possible, had it timed down to the minute. He was so far last coming to the paddock that the stewards decided he needed to be fine the next day. Billy, uh, obviously the rest is history. He won the Triple Crown. Billy went to the stewards the next day and said, guilty as charged, so find me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they did, $250. Or but, something. <laughs> but it worked. The strategy worked. Well, still, uh, you see Bob Baffert there. War Emblem has not yet made an appearance. Bob Newmeyer, what's going on? Well, I don't know if this is the thriller from Manila between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, but... Uh, We've got Niall O'Callaghan, who saddles Wiseman's Ferry. He wants to go in last because he's not sure which is more high-strung, him or his horse. And he'd like to go in after Bob Baffert. But, of course, Baffert likes to go in last with uh, War Emblem. So we get a bit of a stare-off here in the backstretch about, who, about who's going to go in last. And I'm going to uh, take a walk over here and see if I can uh, drum up Niall O'Callaghan, who's the trainer of Wiseman's Ferry, who's... Uh, Got his game face on for the big Belmont Stakes. And Niall, is this a stare-off as to who's going to go to the paddock last here, like a heavyweight championship fight? Not really, not really. He, can't, he always tries to take the edge, you know. Baffert, <laughs> trying to take the edge. But what about the edge out of the starting gate? Your horse has plenty of natural speed. And pace is a big issue in this race. What are your instructions to your jockey, George Chavez? I'm going to make two lefts and be in front of the wire. Make two lefts, meaning he's going to the front, and sometimes they forget to stop? Both turns. <laughs> sometimes they forget to stop when they're... You're, ste you're stealing my lines now. So you will go to the lead in this race? Uh, I, I, I'll tell my jock to make two lefts and be front of the wire. Now, is this a horse that you think has the kind of quality that could give War Emblem a go, or is this just a nuisance for him today on the front end? I hope he's a nuisance for him at the, uh, at the wire. At the wire and not the front. Niall yes. O'Callaghan, good luck. Thank you. Okay, Niall O'Callaghan, he's waiting. He's stalking. He's nervous. Baffert's waiting. He's stalking. He's nervous. That's the backdrop for the Belmont Stakes, Tom. And Niall strolls off. You thought the big fight was tonight. <laughs> it's going on as we speak. And the swagger of a heavyweight champion, of course, will belong to War Emblem. But in the Lucas Barn, where they've already set out four Belmont Stakes winners, in Wayne Lucas's career, not much is happening either. Let's go to Mike Battaglia. Thanks, Tom. And, you know, I talked to Bob, and he's just in no hurry. Bob said, uh, they call us over way too early. The race doesn't go till 6.20. He says, I'll have him to the paddock in plenty of time. I won't get fined. I've never been late to the paddock in my life. But uh, as of right now, he's just not in any hurry. And like you said, this might be a little chess game between these trainers. So, I don't know. We just have to wait. Uh, Baffert's got a mind of his own. We all know that. When he, when he walks over, that's when he walks over, Tom. All right, and uh, some activity behind you there, and we'll return to Belmont in a moment. You know, back in 1978, the decade had already produced two brilliant Triple Crown winners, Secretariat and Seattle Slough. Racing's last Triple Crown winner is the subject of our Chrysler moment. And through his rivalry with Alley Dog, the County Metco was favored in the Derby, but a firm won by a length and a half. Then, in the Preakness, the Wolfson's Harborview Farm colors went wire to wire. So trainer Laz Barrera sent his colt to the Belmont with a triple in his sights. The kid, Steve Coffin, who had just turned 18, had a chance to be the youngest Triple Crown winning jockey. Affirmed on the inside, and Alidar hooked up early. And through the home stretch, it was one of the great duels in racing history. Feeling the whip left-handed from Cawthon for the first time, Affirmed again found a way to beat his rival and claim the Triple Crown. This year, the world's top horses will buy for victory at the Belmont Stakes. But only one horse will be vying for a place in history. Only one horse will be attempting a feat unrealized in 24 years. Only one horse will be racing for the Visa Triple Crown. Here comes War Emblem! And only one card can get you into 
see it. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I've always had the will to win. It's what drives me to do more. And when it comes to your health, you can do more. A medicine called Altase can help. I take it for high blood pressure, but it may also help you in a different, important way. If you're 55 or older and have had a heart attack or stroke or have diabetes, plus another risk factor, you can do more. When added to existing medications, Altase was clinically proven to further reduce the risk of stroke, heart attack, and cardiovascular death. Prescription Altase is not for everyone. Altase may cause swelling of the mouth, tongue, or throat, which could cause extremely serious risk and requires immediate medical care. Common side effects include persistent dry cough, dizziness, and lightheadedness due to low blood pressure. Do not take Altase during pregnancy as death or injury to your unborn child may result or if you've experienced serious side effects related to previous ACE inhibitors. You can do more. Go ahead. Ask your doctor about Altase. It was a client's dream and a nation's journey. To grow its standing in the global marketplace through the creation of its first investment bank. And in building on the trust they placed in us, their dream became our own. Because that was the dream of our client, the nation of China. And that is what we do at Morgan Stanley. One client at a time. Brown's technology helps me see my supply chain minute by minute. Brown shows me problems before they get bigger. Brown works with me to give me control. Brown reveals the hidden opportunities before they go away. Brown never says to me, you can't do that. That's what lawyers are for. Better supply chain visibility. What can Brown do for you? Shaq put on a show in Game 2, scoring 40 points as the Lakers moved another step closer to their third consecutive NBA title. But now the series shifts to New Jersey and Jason Kidd's loud home crowd. Lakers, Nets, Game 3 of the NBA Finals, tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, NBC. There's the horse with the swagger of the heavyweight champion, War Emblem, as made his way out of the stall and is coming toward the paddock with a chance for racing history, a chance to become the 12th winner of the Triple Crown and claim the $5 million bonus put up by Visa. Now at 6-5 to five and leading the entourage, Baffert with an arm around his fiance Jill Moss, his son's in front of him. His dad, Bill, is there as well. 79 years old. You had to say easy, leading the way over for his Derby and Preakness champion war emblem. There's uh, Bill Baffert with a yellow tie there as the entourage heads through a tunnel here from the stable area. You go through a tunnel and then come up into the paddock. Jockeys making their way out to the paddock where they'll meet with the trainers to get their riding instructions. We see Mike Smith. He'll be meeting with Wayne Lucas, Gary Stevens, Eddie Delahousse, all the stars of the game. Richard Migliori, based here in New York, has never won a Belmont Stakes. Kent DeSormo came so close. Mike Smith, as Kenny Rice mentioned earlier, Mike Smith, seven Belmont riding titles, 0 for 8 in the Belmont Stakes. Jerry Bailey went by for a Chavez as the jockeys make this trip out of what must be going through the mind of young Victor Espinoza, born on a farm. He milked cows as a youngster. He was driving a bus in Mexico City when his brother said, let's go to the racetrack. And he saw all the jockeys and all their colorful silks, and he said, I want to be a jockey. They're posing for the official photograph now. But Victor Espinoza has a lot of pressure on him today. The Belmont Stakes and the mile and a half distance at this racetrack can be a tricky proposition. Let's go to Donna Brothers. Tom, I'm standing here with Wayne. Uh, Wayne, you've won 13 Triple Crown races for Belmonts. How do you get ready for a mile and a half? You never know. It's every, every year is a different scenario because of the horse, of course. I don't think any of me or my colleagues can really feel comfortable that we're, any of us are going to get it. We just have to go out there and see. I felt like we were walking over like Tiger Woods coming up in the Masters on the first 18, around the 18th green with one stroke down here. 
Yeah, they were all rooting for you. Well, I, I, we feel real good about it. It's a wonderful day and a great New York crowd, and I think we're going to have a good event. What do you do, tactically speaking, to try to turn the tables on War Emblem today? Well, we're a little bit tighter, so we're going to be able to take it to him a little bit more. Obviously, he's the speed of the race along with a couple others, but I think we'll be able to dictate a little bit more what we want to do earlier rather than stay in a stalking position. Okay, and one final question. I'll let you throw that saddle on. There's this uh, rivalry that they hype developing between you and Baffert. You guys have dominated the Triple Crown scene for several years now. Do you feel that rivalry? Well, I, we sure don't want to have a Triple Crown winner if you're asking me. I want to I want to be the first to do it. But Bob's been a great opponent, and uh, that's, a, that's a very good horse. And I just wish he has a good trip, and we have a good trip, and may the best horse win. Wayne, good luck to you. Tom, back to you. And the owners of uh, Proud Citizen have pledged any purses won today to the Twin Towers Fund, a minimum of 100000 Well, one victory for War Emblem already today. The heavyweight champ comes into the ring last. That's the case with War Emblem. He won the Battle of Wills. He was the last to leave the stable area and the last to arrive in the paddock. He hopes to be first across the line.
The 134th running of the Belmont Stakes is brought to you by Visa, proud sponsor of the Visa Triple Crown. By Budweiser, delivering beer at its best with the crisp, clean, and refreshing taste known only to the king of beers. By Polo.com, shop the world of Ralph Lauren just a click away. And by Sun America, the retirement specialist.
Linda Etter. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today.
the seven was scratched with a foot injury. Eight is Medallia Doro. He's made every race in the Triple Crown Trail, but after fourth in the Derby, a disappointing eighth in the Preakness. Kent DeSormo 0 for 4. In the Belmont, Bobby Franklin looking for his first Triple Crown win. Proud citizen, Mike Smith, those seven Belmont titles, but 0 for 8 in the Belmont Stakes. But Wayne Lucas, 13 Triple Crown wins. No one has won more. Third in the Preakness, second in the Derby. Here's the 10. It is War Emblem. Victor Espinosa's brother, Jose, is a jockey based here. War Emblem working on four in a row. This would be the big one. He could be the 12th winner of the Triple Crown. The 11 is Magic Wisner, the closing second in the Preakness. Bred, owned, trained, exercised by Nancy Alberts, who is making her first trip ever to Belmont Park. First race outside Maryland for Magic Wisner. Nancy Alberts bought this Colt's mother, his dam, Jay Isma, for $1. Richard Migliori aboard. And the 12 horse is Sarava. Kenny McPeak, who had Harlan's holiday, now has Sarava in the Belmont Stakes. That's a greeting that means good luck to followers of the Candola religion in Brazil. Edgar Prado is up. Sarava, who raced in England before he'd been brought to the United States, comes off a four-length win in the Sir Barton Stakes at Pimlico on Preakness Day. That's the field for the Belmont Stakes. And when we come back, the war horse goes for the triple. With 12 local breweries in the U.S., we're very proud of our ability to get our beer, Budweiser, to our customers in its very freshest form. As a brewer, when beer leaves the brewery, it's in its absolute best condition. It's very, very important that that beer gets to you as a smooth, refreshing premium lager. It's nice to know that people will be enjoying the King of Beers from our neighborhood to yours. Pretty nice, huh? It's a beauty. Get behind the wheel. Really? It's a Sealy. What a car, huh? This is why we don't make cars. But we do make the mattress more people sleep on than any other. It's made for sleep. It's a Sealy. If you're buying or selling a home in this market, tap the power of Prudential Real Estate. Backed by a name trusted for more than 125 years, the Prudential Real Estate Network can get you moving. With more than 42,000 real estate sales professionals you can rely on in offices across North America. Each day, we're helping to bring thousands of buyers and sellers together. Call today and find out why millions of people are sold on Prudential Real Estate. If 
Trade War Emblem. At 6-5, to five, the favorites, and favorites have done well in the Belmont Stakes. Won 59 times. That's 44%. Here are the odds. Our tax 2 is up to 70. Wiseman's Ferry, look for him early. 19-1. to one. Essence of Dubai at 20. Sunday break 7. Perfect Drift is 5. He's the second choice. Proud Citizen at 7-1. to one. Magic Wisner at 7. And War Emblem continues to be the 6-5 to five favorite. There is War Emblem. Before the Preakness, they kept him sort of by himself away from the other horses. Donna Brothers, has that been the case today? Tom, it's been exactly the case today. Uh, he galloped down past all the other horses, and as they've turned around to come back, he's just lagged behind, and uh, Victor Espinosa has walked him along there with his feet out of the irons. He couldn't look any more calm, cool, and collected, so evidently what worked for him in the Preakness is working for him again today. Looking at Victor Espinosa, Donna, and his body language, uh, can you tell if he, if he has the butterflies, a bad case of them at the moment? Well, I'll tell you, I got a good look at him when he went by, and I was trying to see if he was nervous, but uh, he really didn't show any signs of nervousness. He looked like he was paying close attention to his horse and trying to get, pick up on his horse's vibes. And he's in a very relaxed position right now himself, walking along with his feet out of the irons. They both look very relaxed, Tom. Uh, I do think that this is going to be the biggest race of Victor Espinosa's life, but he might not know it yet. <laughs> Well, Bob Baffert knows it. He's been so close. If you figure the standard racing measurement is one length equals one-fifth of a second, the Silver Charm in real quiet, he's a fifth of a second away from having already won two triple crowns. Wayne Lucas has also had a chance at the triple. He's won more triple crown races than any active trainer tied with Sonny Jim Fitzsimmons all time. The two rivals who have been going at it throughout this triple crown series Proud Citizen, second in the Derby, third with a rough trip in the Preakness, and War Emblem, wire to wire at Churchill Downs, just off the fast early pace early at Pimlico. There's Proud Citizen. Probably one of the better training jobs of this year, Proud Citizen. It started out last year nicely with a two, as a two-year-old, had some knee problems. Wayne gave him the time, didn't really mean to have him for the Triple Crown, but he came along so quickly. Wayne set a very unorthodox course for this colt, got him to the Derby in time. He ran a good race in the Derby, wasn't quite fit enough, then had bad luck in the Preakness. Wayne feels he's got him exactly where he wants him today. And, Charles, say, what about War Emblem? Can he do it? I believe he can. I think just what we said earlier, though, Tom, he has got to relax. And judging by the way he's warmed up today, he looks very relaxed. He drew that outside post. Victor will have to be careful about how he gets him away from there, not to get him shaken up too much, but he doesn't want to get hung too far wide. And if he can ease him away and he gets that first half mile comfortably, he's going to be very hard to run down. First half mile will be critical. War Emblem in the 10 post with two horses outside him. And the other expected speed horse, Wiseman's Ferry, in post position three to his inside. And there's a close look at Magic Wisner, the horse that has been written off a little bit as a one-shot wonder, but don't count on it. He's improved and come forward with every race. He'll be closing through the stretch, second in the Preakness. All right, the horse is loading in to the starting gate for the mile-and-a-half Belmont Stakes. And at stake is the Visa Triple Crown. War Emblem trying to become the 12th to wear the crown. The moment is at hand, and here for the call is Tom Durkin. In two and a half minutes, 12 furlongs from now, we will have a triple crown winner, or not, for the 24th consecutive year. The final horse is moving into line for the 134th running of the Belmont Stakes. Perfect drift moving into position. Medaglia Doro alongside him with Kenta Sormo aboard. Here's Proud Citizen, and he'll be breaking right next to his Rival from the Derby and the Preakness, War Emblem, War Emblem, very composed as he takes his spot in the starting gate for this final jewel of the Triple Crown. Magic Wisner, second in the Preakness, strides into the gate, and 70 to 1 long shot, Sarava on the far outside. Sarava balking just momentarily. It's a field of 11. Ready for the start. Getting close. Of the Belmont Stakes. And they're off. And War Emblem's quest for the Triple Crown. He did not break alertly. War Emblem was off near the back of the pack. They race for the clubhouse turn. And Medallion Oro is sent today. And Wiseman's Ferry 
toward the inside, and there goes War Emblem now, and he splits horses as they move into the first turn. He's now third in between horses. And then on the outside, that's Proud Citizen now ranging up to be fourth. Magic Wisner is fifth. Long shot Sarava, sixth on the outside. Sunday break, no better than seventh at this point. Perfect Drift is eighth on the outside. Then Artax, two, followed by Essence of Dubai. Like a hero trails the field. War Emblem is fourth, and he's bottled up on the inside as they make their way into the backstretch. The first quarter in 24 seconds flat. Wiseman's Ferry leads the way into the backstretch. Medallia Doro running in second. Proud Citizen on the outside. And they have effectively bottled up War Emblem. He is now fourth as they continue their run down the backstretch. Hard held is War Emblem. And then Sarava's right alongside him with seven-eighths of a mile to go. Then there's a break up two and a half lengths. Back to Magic Wisner. On the outside of him, Sunday break. Perfect drift. Just floating along comfortably. He's about eight or nine lengths from the lead. They continue up the backstretch. They're halfway home in the Belmont. The pace has been a sensible one. Three quarters and 12 and one. And there's an inviting opening at the inside for War Emblem. And he's making his move with five furlongs to go. War Emblem, Medallia Doro now heads apart for the lead. Wiseman's Ferry is tailing off now. Proud Citizen is poised on the outside. Sunday break has come alive. Four furlongs to go. Medallia Doro in an all-out battle here with War Emblem, Medallia Doro by a neck, War Emblem, Proud Citizen looms a threat, he's on the outside third with three furlongs to go, Sarava the big long shot is winning in fourth, Sunday break is fifth, Magic Wisner beginning to move up now on the outside, he's seven lengths from the lead, and War Emblem is toiling as they turn for home, Medallia Doro, Sunday break, Sarava has come on through to take the lead, and War Emblem has given way. No triple crown for the 24th year. Here comes Sarava and Medallia Dora. they striding to the line together. Sarava on the outside. Medallia Dora toward the rail. They're coming down to the finish. A huge upset is looming here under the line. Sarava has won the biggest long shot in the history of the Belmont Stakes at 70 to 1. Medallia Dora was finishing second there. And by the back, Sunday break. And a huge disappointment today for War Emblem. He was off poorly, never got rolling, and faded in the stretch. So once again, the Triple Crown will go unclaimed, but a worthy winner today in Sarava. Well, all right, Tom Durkin, disappointment. Once again, no Triple Crown winner, but what an upset. War Emblem wound up beating only three horses, and perhaps we had a clue when he broke poorly. But there is Sarava, and what... Sweet revenge for Ken McPeak, who trains Sarava. Harlan's Holiday, the 6-1 to favorite in the Derby, ran poorly, ran poorly in the Preakness. And then the horse was taken away from him, given to another trainer, Todd Pletcher, just this week. What happens? He comes up with a 70-1 to shot to win the Belmont Stakes. <laughs>
saw the start and did not see War Emblem charge out of the gate. Well, he was off slowly. Bob Baffert was less than thrilled with that outside post position, but War Emblem didn't break well. It wouldn't have mattered. There he is right here in the gate. And they're off, all except for War Emblem. He breaks eye, knuckles. You say, oh, yes. And it goes down to his knees. And I'll bet you one thing. I bet he grabbed his quarter pretty good there, too. You see his snap his leg back up. So he went to his post. knees and then sort of stepped on himself. That may explain a lot. Here he is again. Yes. He bobbled pretty severely. We've talked before about the action of horses leaving the gate. They go on their tiptoes. It's easily for them to knuckle over those first few strides until they get into gear. It happens very frequently, but it's a, certainly a disaster when you're trying to get everything perfect for a triple crown. And here's War Emblem finally... He made a move up through the inside. Victor Espinosa had been trapped in behind horses. Finally got clear, moved along through the inside. Looked as though he was going easily here. Medalladora was outside of him. He looked very strong here, but then Medalladora moves to him, and War Emblem has just had it. Foles and has nothing left for the stretch. Let's go down to Bob Newmeyer. Tom, I'm here with Victor Espinosa. He's watching uh, our view of the turn. At this point, Victor, you're in the hunt, but you've used your horse to this point, have you not? Well, the other problem is with the star, you know, he kind of, you know, stumbled from the side pretty good. He almost fell down, and, and after that, you know, I just stayed right in behind the horses. There was, the problem there was in the start. After all the way around, I was having plenty of room to get clear to the inside and everything, but I already lost everything in the start. At this point, you're uh, wrapping up on your horse, but clearly the start cost you. Could you walk us through your thoughts? Uh, when you entered the first turn, I know you had wanted to be on the lead or at least right off, and now you find yourself fourth or fifth. What are you thinking about then? Well, I, I, I was thinking if I can't use it or no, no more. I had to wait uh, I, as much as I can because I already have the trouble in the start, so I don't want to use my horse early. And thinking about if they have a little bit shy right in the, in the, in the, down the lane, if I save a little bit, I have a plenty of room to stay inside. That's why I don't just want to cool down, but obviously it cost me everything at the start. Bad luck, buzzard's luck for War Emblem today, Tom. And here is what's happened to him coming out of the starting gate. Watch him stumble and go right to his knees. War Emblem right there at the break. Nearly falls down, as Victor Espinosa said. He's lucky to stay on him, as a matter of fact. He's lucky that he didn't fall off right at the start. And then, of course, uh, it was too much to overcome, though he made a valiant move down the backside. So here are the prices. Sarava, $142.50, $50.22.40. The biggest upset since Sherlock, $132.1961. Medallia Doro, $16.1060. Sunday break, third at $7.10. The Exacta. $2,454 and the triple paid $25,200. And unfortunately, that is Proud Citizen who is about to be loaded into the equine ambulance. Dr. Larry Brambledge will give us a report on his condition when it becomes available. He's being loaded into the ambulance as the Garland of White Carnations goes over the withers of Sarava. Ken McPeak with his back to there. And his wife Sue off to his left. What an upset. Sarava. It only had one stake start. He won the Sir Barton Stakes at Pimlico on Preakness Day. Comes back to take the test of a champion. Edgar Prado celebrates his first win in four Belmont tries. And Ken McPeak, it is sweet. Brought to you by Visa, the official card of the NFL, and the only card accepted at the Olympic Games. And the Visa Triple Crown. I almost forgot. We're also the official card of NASCAR. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Truly. 
a pleasure to drive. Even when that sort of thing is strictly forbidden. Samuel, is that you? Yes, it is I. Exclusively from Chrysler, our seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge, because love is a commitment. How safe is your retirement plan?